Good afternoon, Ravens, and welcome to this week's edition of o w Now. Today we are bringing you features on Keaton Conrad and Maddie Schneider and a look at signing day. For Connor Bickford, I'm Haley Kramer. Let's get started. OMW sophomore Keaton Conrad is an aspiring musician with a distinct style. Isabel Lubby and Savannah Plumley have more on the story. Keaton Conrad, sophomore at ONW, has been musical from a young age, teaching himself how to play the mandolin, ukulele, and bass drums, and receiving lessons for the piano and the guitar. When he was just seven years old, he started writing his own songs and producing his music. My style is very unique and complex. I mix many different genres together, from indie to pop to rock, disco, funk, whatever. Keaton currently has six original songs out and he hopes to have a second EP done by the end of January. I like about music the fact that I can just sit down and then forget about the world entirely and you can really move someone through music. Keaton hopes to have a career in music in the future. His recent release on SoundCloud, Don't Cry, has reached the most hits he's ever received. Don't Cry was dedicated to Sierra and Katie. I, I feel it is my mission, at least for now, to make people feel different things, whether it's sad or happy with my music. I just saw everybody being so sad, and I mean, it, it was a terrible, terrible tragedy. I just want to perk everybody up a little bit, and I figure, well, what better way to do that than just through music? Along with being involved in choir and the school musical, Keaton also occasionally plays at Shawnee Pizza. If you want to hear more of Keaton's original songs and covers, you can look him up on SoundCloud. For ONW Now, this has been Isabel Lobby. Now back to the desk. Cyber Monday. Every year, Olathe Northwest athletes go through the signing process. Many people don't know how much work it takes behind the scenes to sign a letter of intent. Quinn Barkingham has a look at the signing process. Pro process can be a stressful part in the life of an athlete, but in the end, it all pays off. And it can start as early as uh, middle school when they um, join the team and they start attracting attention from coaches um, throughout um, the nation uh, for the athletic ability. Austin Hansen explains this process during his signing period. I started getting some emails from colleges saying they were going to come watch me pitch during the high school season, and yeah, and then they had I call I had to call all the coaches once a week and check in with them and see how they were doing, and then once they came and watched me pitch, and if I did well, I would I would they would come I would go on a visit to their school, and that's how I kind of got recruited. Um, coaches from all over contact them. Um, it's pretty constant until they make a decision. The downfall comes from the constant pressure these athletes are under. It was really stressful because I didn't, I was really like pressing to get, get the decision done and it was just a really long process but my favorite memory was probably walking in the Oklahoma campus and I kind of just knew I wanted to go there as soon as, as soon as I was done with my visit. When they sign with that school that they've always dreamed about, I mean that's a celebration, that's, that's big, that's huge. After the efforts have been put forth, everything else seems to fall into place for these student athletes. My coach said, hard work, all your hard work makes these days worth it, which is really true because I worked really hard 
working out seven days a week and kind of finally sets in that everything is paid off. One athlete who signed a letter of intent was Maddie Schneider to play volleyball in college. Anna Massey has the report. Schneider. Maddie Schneider just finished her last season at Olathe Northwest. Schneider has been playing volleyball since a young age. I started playing when I was about 13. That's when I picked up club. I played for Team Dynasty. My favorite memory was probably staying in the hotel down at State. Um, that's when we all got really close and it was fun. We were kind of screwing around half the time, so we had a really good time down there. Schneider's success on the court has led to awards she has won this season. Um, this year, I was nominated for um, the Sunflower League Player of the Year, so that was pretty exciting. First team all league, and I also got um, onto the all tournament team down at state. Um, I'm probably most proud of the Player of the Year. Um, I got co player of the year, so it was kind of cool to have the title myself this year, and I really didn't think I was going to get it again, so it was exciting. Maddie has big plans for her college career. I'm going to be attending University of Maryland at Baltimore County. I'm definitely nervous. I don't really know what to expect going to a D1 school from high school. Um, I start training this summer with them, so I know a lot of the girls are ready from camp, but I'm excited. So My fears? Probably not fitting in. I mean, that's always a fear of everyone. I always feel like I'm going to be like too slow to get into it because I'm not really going to be up to the speed yet of Division One volleyball. It's going to be hard. I'm definitely going to have to earn playing time, so I think that's one of my biggest fears is not being able to fit in with the team. This has been Anna Massey for ONW Now. Now back to the desk. Every month, Ravens are nominated for Acts of Kindness. Here in November's Prop Box nominees, Sean McPartland has a story. Dr. Paulson, and the Friends of Rachel Club are excited to recognize this month's Ravens Top Prop Box nominees. I had everyone sign a card in the Flex Theater on the day that we were grieving over the two students' deaths because it shocked everyone. Everyone was really upset about what happened and it was pretty depressing and so I just had everyone sign a card if they wanted to pay respects. And I started by telling them that, I'm so, that we were all sorry about what happened and I passed it to everyone that I saw and had them sign their names on it. Addie Barraza is always showing kindness to peers, and after lunch she gives her time to clean tables and pick up the trash that is left behind. Bailey Krauss is supportive of her fellow Ravens. When she notices that someone is having a hard time, she helps them get through it and is a good friend. Karan Kaushal found a Ravens backpack and cell phone that was left behind in a classroom. He brought the items to the office to be claimed safely by the owner. Anna Kim is a role model with her kindness to all Ravens. She daily models what it means to be one Raven family. For ONW Now, I'm Sean McPartland. Now back to the desk. Haley, can you believe there are only 22 days left until Christmas? That's right, Connor. And Raven Service Club is sponsoring the annual Here Comes Santa Claus competition. Pedro Von Simpson has more. A Here Comes Santa Claus is a fundraiser that Raven Service Club hosts every year, and we actually choose a nonprofit organization to benefit. And this year, we chose to benefit Heart to Heart International, which is a local organization that provides worldwide public health care. Okay, so Here Comes Santa Claus works in that students donate money to different candidates. So we have three different categories. You get to choose a teacher and also a staff member and a senior, and they all dress up in different Christmas costumes. Donate money to Heart to Heart, and you will get to see them in those hilarious costumes on December 16th. These are the candidates for this year's Here Comes Santa Claus competition. Vote for your favorites all next week during lunch and help support Heart to Heart. Carla Orner is the program director at Heart to Heart. She describes why it is important for us to donate. You know, without groups like you guys, we couldn't function. Everything we do is based on donors helping us to, to do things. So even though you're sitting here in the high school and you guys are giving money and it seems like, oh, you know, what am I doing? You're really impacting people. For ONW Now, this has been Pedro Von Simpson. Now back to the desk. During lunch, RFC is selling brand new t-shirts with all new designs. Here's a promotional video for the new looks. Yep, that's me. What's up, Ray and Chels? So you guys going to the big game against East tonight? Um, who's after the Nature Club meeting? Well, I have to. Do you want to 
you nasties. <laughs> Wait, are you okay? Oh, snap, we need more spirit wear. You know what would be so cool? No, I know how to fix this. Hey, Ravens, don't be like the people in my vision and come out and buy spirit wear and get hyped for the basketball games. Short sleeves are $10 and long sleeves are $15. T-shirts will be sold all week long during lunch. Can you believe there are only two weeks until finals? Joe Caliga walks us through final exam week. Alright class, settle down, get back in your seats. Get out your guided notes from yesterday and we'll continue where we left off. Yes, Jake? Are we having a final in this class? Yes, every course offered here at Lathe Northwest will have a final. Don't expect any of your classes to blow off the day with video games or extra credit or class parties. Finals are serious business. How are finals graded? Most final exams will be cumulative, meaning they will test over everything you have learned this semester. Final exams are typically worth a substantial amount of points. Please check with your teacher or your syllabus to find out this information. But what if you lost your syllabus? If in doubt for anything, ask your teacher. This is a very important part in preparation for your finals. So, when are finals? On Monday, you will come to school for a regular seven hour day of classes. That evening, you can come to the school at 6.30 for our annual Cram and Coco session to study, collaborate, and share notes with other students. Your first final will be Tuesday, second hour. Tuesday will consist of all of your even classes. Wednesday will consist of your first and fifth hour, followed by Thursday, consisting of third and seventh. And another thing, passes will not be delivered during finals. Please accommodate your appointments appropriately. But what if I have a lobotomy on Wednesday? Finals will be made up in January if you so have to miss a class. Please discuss with your teacher to follow this. Did I answer everybody's questions? All right, get back to work. Finally, get out your phones and help the Ravens Choir win a radio competition for $5,000. All you have to do is text the word Ravens to 47183. That's Ravens to 47183. For Connor Bickford, I'm Haley Kramer. Have a great week, Ravens.